I have to share this story. It made me laugh. Now, I don't know too much about the boy bands of the late 1990s and early 2000s, except that they were extremely popular, and that because my daughter was born in 1996, I missed that entire era of pop music. So I went online to school myself on 98 Degrees in anticipation of today's guest, singer Jeff Timmons, joining me on the show to talk about his latest work. I clicked on a Google link to the band's official website, 98degrees.com, but it never materialized. My second choice was to read the Wikipedia page on the band, which I don't do very often, but it was there, and what the heck. Now, before I could read anything else, the following disclaimer appeared. It said, this article is about the band. For the body temperature, see 98.6 degrees. Apparently, there are only 0.6 degrees of separation between the band and normal human body temperature. And I wondered if Kevin Bacon knew anything about this. And incidentally, there is no redirect on the 98.6 degrees site back to the band 98 degrees, just in case you were wondering. Now, where was I? Um, oh, Jeff Timmons, of course. Uh, the founder of 98 Degrees was part of a singing act that sold more than 10 million albums and scored several top 40 singles, including Because of You and This Gift. The group's successes were eventually overwhelmed in the public eye when one of its members, Nick Lachey, married singer Jessica Simpson. Uh, their short-lived marriage was memorably chronicled on MTV's The Newlyweds. And 98 Degrees released its last album, The Collection, and toured in 2002. Jeff Timmons released a solo album, Whisper That Way, two years later, and is now ready to release a third. Jeff, welcome to Mr. Media. How are you? That's just a fantastic intro, but I really appreciate that. Very nice. Uh, I, I, very professional. Uh, I'm just so flattered that you did the research and stuff like that, and I'm glad that you... Uh, I'm glad that Wikipedia associates us with the body temperature and, and directs people to, to, to the real body temperature. That's so funny. Isn't that bizarre? I just thought that was so strange. <laughs> yeah, just in case people didn't know. That's just <laughs> Right, exactly. That's, that's exactly what made me laugh. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, looking at the, I'm not looking at the page for the band. I'm looking at the page for body temperature. Oh, how could I confuse the two? <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Wow. Do you, do you ever uh, get tired of, of of being that guy from 98 degrees? Do you ever wish that would stop? No, I can honestly say that I that I don't because it 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 was such a such a great experience for me and you know I got to travel the world and you know put music out for a living and I'm still doing music for a living and and living the dream so to speak. So no, it doesn't get old and and people will always associate me with that group and that genre of music and. You know, that's fine. For the most part, it's it's not a bad thing. So uh, it doesn't get old. I love it. Well, I guess there's a lot of guys who want to sing and make music for a living who would kill to have the association of, of, a, of an act that, you know, sold millions of albums, was, you know, huge, had its moment in time. And, and you know, I mean, you, you, I guess you always get to be that guy. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, it's not something that I go around advertising every day. Uh, but b because you know that that jo that uh, time frame has now passed us, and I'm into different things like producing and things like that on my own. But uh, you know, it certainly is has been has been a great blessing and a, and a lucky lucky charm for me being a being a part of that group. I, I, I think it's great. You certainly seem to have your followers. Uh, before we even got on the air, I think there were a dozen people waiting in the chat room uh, to hear you talk. So if you want to say hello to all of them, I know they're out there listening to you. Well, hey, what's up, everybody? I, I appreciate you tuning in today, and I've been doing a lot of interviews lately, but this is a special one for me, being that this is such a great show on Blog Talk. And uh, thanks for thanks for all the support that you've been giving me, not only in, uh, in the in the past years, but now since I've resurfaced and trying to trying to get my music out there. I, I totally sincerely appreciate it. All right, let me let everybody know if you want to call in and talk to Jeff, and I'm told a few of you might. Uh, the number is six. Uh, what is my number? Six four six. Five nine five three one three five. We've got Jeff uh, till about uh, one thirty Eastern. So uh, if you want to get on the get on the switchboard now, please do. Um, so uh, since scheduling this interview, now I admitted that I, I, I did not know a lot about ninety eight degrees. So I'm, I'm being upfront, but it, it's obvious you you still have this extremely vocal and active fan base, and you are obviously pretty good at promotion yourself. 
Well, it's important to me to get out to the fans. I mean, like you mentioned in your intro, we sold over 10 million records, you know, worldwide. So the fans are out there, and a lot of the fans were were younger and, and female, and 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 I, I'm sure that you know, even even when we were younger, as you grow out, uh, grow up, and music changes, you still have an affinity for the groups that you liked when you were a kid and younger and uh, and a teenager. So I know that the fans are out there, and I know that they might be excited about some of the new music or some of the new projects that I'm doing. So. You know, it's important for me to get back out there and be active and promote and uh, create awareness for what I've been working on. I'm very proud of it, and I'm so proud of it that I'm betting on it by giving it out for free. So, you know, I, I try to do everything I can to, to stay vocal with them and, and get them excited. And they're, they're, they're fantastic. I mean, I just did a show in L.A. that was almost sold out, and it was packed, and the fans were great, and just really good people showed up and just showed their support. And, you know, I, I, I like I said, I'm living the dream, and uh, I, I'm very, very pleased and, and proud to be a part of, of having any fan base. <laughs> uh, let me ask you, do you have any secrets that you've been keeping yourself about those 98 degrees years that you've, you've just been looking for the right place to reveal and, and tell your fans something that they don't know about you or about the, about the band from those days? Well, I've mentioned it a few times, but I don't think people know generally that when I was in the group, I had stage fright. I mean, I, I was always afraid to go up on stage and nervous. Uh, and, and, you know, I was so scared that, it, you know, especially for big television performances, I would literally get choked up and I was sort of like so nervous I'd go, I, I would have to swallow in the middle of verses and things like that because I was so nervous that I went to a hypnotist. I, I tried everything. I read all these books. I tried to meditate, do yoga, anything to calm my nerves, and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So um, I eventually... I went to a hypnotist, that didn't work, and then, you know, after being on my own for quite a few years, you know, since I started touring, like, in 2003 on my own, doing shows here and there, I eventually became more comfortable with myself on stage, now I don't care, I mean, now I'm fine, I have fun, and whatever happens, happens, but yeah, I used to be extremely, extremely, I used to get sick before performances and going on TV sometimes. What do you think it was that, 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 set you off was it the i mean the noise i know was very loud <laughs> and i don't mean from the band <laughs> uh, but no the crowd was the crowd the crowd noise wasn't bad i mean that was always fun and exciting i mean you know that made it difficult to sing well because you couldn't hear uh but uh i just think that you know i just didn't want to make a mistake i grew up being a perfectionist and wanted to be the best at whatever i was doing and uh, i've always been that way i'm sort of hardwired and a nervous guy in general so you know, I just think getting up on stage, I didn't want to make a mistake, and I wanted to sound the best I could, and I put a lot of pressure on myself. And, you know, at the end of the day, when I would be making these mistakes, 99% of the time, the people in the audience wouldn't even, you know, realize it or know it. And so I was, you know, and I think really it took me doing the shows on my own and, and have, getting getting that confidence and going out there and, you know, making mistakes and being human, and everybody would know that. And I was like, okay, well, you know, at least I'm going up there and trying my best and putting my best foot forward and trying to give them the best performance I can. And now I'm just pretty much relaxed out there. But, you know, it's just a, just a lot of pressure. I put a lot of pressure on myself. Well, speaking of putting pressure on you, how do you feel about taking a call from one of your fans? Would love that. Would love that. <laughs> All right. We've got a call from 817 area code. Are you there? Hi. 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 Welcome. Hi. My name's Mickey, and I've just, like, left Jeff for almost 13 years, so... I'm on my lunch break, so I thought I'd call in and listen. So. Hi, Jeff. What's up, Mickey? How are you? Thanks for calling in today. I haven't talked to you in a long time. What's going on? Nothing. I just wanted to see when you were touring and if you're coming to Texas or Ohio or... I think we're talking to like two mm -hmm. two different two different clubs and and venues and two different and 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 two dozen I'm sorry two dozen cities. So we're trying to get it mapped out, pick the exact place that you know we could get as many people as, you as possible in there and see where people want me. And I know that uh, I, since I've been putting this music out, now people are resurfacing and getting excited about it. So I'm I'm definitely going to come to Texas for sure. I just don't know where yet or when. Well, you can stay at my house if you need. Place to stay, so. <laughs> oh, great. Thanks. That was, what a nice invitation. I appreciate that. I'm going to pick you up on that. Then you won't be able to get rid of me, and I'll be eating all your cereal and stuff and lounging around, and then you get sick. And, uh, what, how did it go wrong, Mickey? When did, it, when did this happen? What? I said, when did it all go wrong? We were so close until I moved in. <laughs> hey, if you move in, I can move out. Like, I have 
brothers that live down the street. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. No, I, I hope to see you sometime soon. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to definitely make my way to Texas, so. I mean, I have eight bedrooms, so it's like I lived in that same house with my brother for years. We didn't see each other for months, so it won't be a problem. But now okay, cool. um, about the music, um, I was actually going through my um, CD collection here in my car, and I found my Jordan Knight love songs. So um, I noticed that you and Matt wrote on a few songs on there. So what else have you collaborated with besides Jordan and, you know? Well, you know, I've, I've done some stuff with a, a couple of rock bands, but they haven't come out yet. And, you know, I've been doing production with, with some female solo artists. There's this really good girl I worked with a few years back named Victoria Hamilton, who's just an amazing singer. Uh, there's a girl named Tawny Heath, uh, working with this girl named Rhapsody, who's just got really unique, brilliant-sounding uh, stuff. Um, so, you know, nothing that's really come out yet. Wrote on some stuff overseas. Wrote, kind of co-wrote. I think we wrote a song for Aaron Carter and got that on his record. And, uh, and, you know, just trying to stay busy. And I think that, you know, I've been trying to get production work and people to understand that I write and produce these songs for a long time. But I think that, you know, being in a, what was considered a boy band, you know, a lot of those songs were written and produced for us. And, and when we did produce it, we didn't get a lot of credit. So people don't assume that I can do that kind of stuff. So that's one of the main reasons, uh, aside from just wanting the music to get out there for my own stuff, that I'm giving it away for free so people can see that I actually can kind of produce the stuff right. in the studio, too. Mm-hmm. And speaking of songwriting, I have a lot of um, friends that are professional and they're independent artists, and a lot of them are um, getting their music to television, even though they might not have a major label. Have you been working with anybody and trying to get your music into film and TV? Well, there have been a couple of publishing companies that have been that I've been approached by in the last month. So I'm sort of negotiating some things with them, and that's what they're talking about doing, TV and, and you know commercials and movies and things like that, and, and as well as getting some of the music placed with other artists. And so I'm just trying to find the right situation for that, too, because those deals can be tricky, too. You don't want to give everything away and, and, and you know, give all your work away for free. Uh, you know, some of it, but not all of it. But uh, so, yeah, I mean, there are people that are, I'm finally starting to get the attention. I feel really lucky that uh, the response to the music's been good. Okay, well, thanks for your time, and, you know, I wish you the best, and I hope to see you soon. So have a great day. Thanks, Mickey. Take care. Okay, bye. Bye. Well, Thanks sweet. so much for calling. That was great. But she's a sweetheart. Uh, so you, do, you do know her? Yeah, th- yeah. She's been a fan for many, many years. Always been very supportive. Been at everything, and and you know, she's she's been around a long time, and always, even when we weren't doing anything, uh, being really kind, and and always sending me nice notes and saying nice things about me or showing up at at the, at the appearances. So I totally appreciate her. Well, you know, I have to ask you a question. I way back. Uh, in the mid '80s, I was a, a music critic for uh, uh, some daily newspapers and did some uh, music magazine type stuff. And <laughs> I'll tell you the story. Uh, I and a photographer had gone. Uh, Duran Duran was brand new at the time. They were touring the United States for the first time, and the you know the girls were just screaming their heads off. And we saw them at the Lakeland Civic Center. I think it was you know 83, 45. I'd have to check the dates, but. So the photographer went backstage, and after the show, the guys took off, and there was this mountain of stuffed animals that were thrown to them and this pile of letters and stuff. And he actually – it was all left behind. The guys didn't take any of it. Uh, He grabbed some of the letters and brought them back to the office with him, and we read them. And I was just – I'd never seen this stuff before. I'm sure you're very familiar with it. But some of the things that some of the young ladies – and they seemed very young – wanted – to, uh, I don't know, accomplish with the guys in the band? <laughs> what, what an interesting way to put it. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and here's the thing. What to accomplish? I love it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So the next day, one of my editors thought it would be fun to pretend to be uh, John, oh gosh, I can't think, John Taylor, and put on a little British accent and call the number on one of these letters. Wow. And, yeah. And so... Hello, uh, this is John Taylor from uh, Duran Duran. And uh, so he calls and, and he gets the mother and the mother puts the girl on. And the girl is like screaming. She can't believe her luck. And, and he says, uh, darling, did you really mean to say that you wanted to me? Why would you want to say that? Well, I, uh, uh, you know, so my question, <laughs> my question, Jeff, without getting into the details of that letter, I think you got the picture, is where do you draw a line over the years? And did you is the line the same today that you're now you're a 
you're, you're a dad yourself, is the line different than it was, say, you know, 10, 12 years ago? Wow, what an interesting question. <laughs> yeah, the line's definitely different. I think that, you know, one of the things when you dream about being a rock star or a pop star is, is you know, having all these crazy girls after you and stuff like that. And I think that, for me anyway, I'd say the first two or three months when we were on the road of our five, six-year run, I was really excited and, you know, hanging out with different girls here and there and stuff like that. But then there became a certain point that it wasn't very interesting to me anymore, believe it or not. I was more interested in having a sort of a solid relationship. You know, that's all flattering. And as a guy, you dream about having girls throw themselves at you when you're a kid and a young adult and in college and stuff like that. But at some point when you actually, when it actually happens, you start to get a little bored with it quickly. Now, some guys don't. Some guys love it, and they keep on it, and that's what they do. But it sort of lacks a little bit of depth. Not, you know, I'm not trying to say I'm like the most deepest guy in the world. And I, you know, but at some point, there's an emptiness to it, and you don't really like it that much. And it, yeah, So that phase didn't last too long for me in general. But with, with regards to the fans outside of groupies and things like that, I'm always close, and I, I have trouble drawing the line. In fact, sometimes, as, as far as interacting with them and being becoming close to them in a friendship type of way, and you know, it, it, it and it gets to a point where sometimes management or people say, you know what, the more you give to the fans, the more you talk to them, it waters down your star power. But you know, I'm not interested in being a star. I'm interested in getting people excited about my music, talking about it, telling me how I can make it better, and sharing what, how they feel when they listen to it. So I'm not going to change the way I am with the fans. And that's never going to happen. It didn't happen in 98 Degrees. We were always very accessible to the fans. It won't happen now. So on that aspect of it, the personal friendship, friendliness aspect of it, the line really doesn't get drawn at all. Until, unless it's a dangerous kind of uh, relationship that interferes with my personal life or something of that nature, which does happen at times. Uh, you know, I, I, I like to be very, very personal with the fans. And, 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 you know, they can get a hold of me in many ways, on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, the social networks, you know, and they can meet me in person and I'll never turn anybody away. Uh, yeah. and, and that's just the way it is. And, and if I can't get to them and, I can't, and I'm so busy, it's only because I'm busy. It's not because I don't want to be accessible to the fans. Well, speaking of the current, let's. Uh, I want to squeeze in some of your music here. Uh, this is uh, always ends the same, which I believe is the song that you you wrote with Jordan Knight of New Kids on the Block. That's right, and, and Jordan, you know, he doesn't write a whole lot or produce a whole lot. But I was always when I was working with him at the time a few years back, I was always very impressed with his talent. You know, a lot of these guys in some of these bands are maybe not be the most talented guys in the world. They might be a good looking guy, but not the most talented guys. Jordan isn't. That's not the case with him. He's talented. He can play. He can write. He can sing. He's got a. He's got a. He's a good. He's got a great background in music. He knows a lot of the old school stuff. Uh, and so uh, you know, we got in the studio and, and we decided to write something one day. And he just had these wonderful chords and and was playing the chords and it was sort of like an old school throwback ballad. And we just wrote it that night and I recorded it later on and. It was just a great experience working with him. And I said, come on, man, produce, let's produce some music together. He's like, nah, nah, I just want to do my own stuff and put my own music out. So, But he's a real, really good guy. All right. Well, with your permission, this is, uh, always ends the same. And I'll also tell our caller from 323 to hang on, and we'll go to you right after the song. Here we go. This is uh, Always Ends the Same with Jeff Tennant. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. This is Jammin' Jesse Wright with WRPM FM Radio. Now, ladies, grab your guys, because we're taking you all the way back to 1992, where it always ends the same. Baby. You know I'm feeling you. Why you want to try and break my heart like that? Behind the lie, the 
thoughts of you taking over me And my mind's in overdrive That was Always Ends the Same, like Jesse Simmons, Jordan McKnight. Jordan Knight, I'm sorry. And then uh, we have a call for you, Jeff, uh, from 323. Are you there? Hi. Hey. This is Alma. Hi. Alma, what's up? How are you? Good. How are you? I just wanted to say thank you so much for Saturday. It was awesome. Did you guys have fun? I had a blast hanging out with you guys. It was awesome. Thank you. Well, thanks for being there. It was my pleasure. It was probably one of, if not the most fun I've ever had at a show, really. I had a blast. You knew how to get the crowd going. You did. (laughs) You did. Good, good. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you had fun. I have a question, though. Are you going to be doing a show up north anytime soon, too? I'm working on it right now, but what I'm actually working on is I'm going to do one in in Orange County. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. I don't know if it's going to be next, but I think I'm going to work on that, and it's going to be in Cota de Casa. So okay. it's, we're going to try to get people from San Diego there and people from Orange County there and people from L.A. or wherever they want to come from. I mean, last time, I mean, this last show, I think we had people from overseas there too. So uh, it, it was, it's cool. And I know that one's for sure. I know we're working on Nor- NorCal too. So um, okay. should be pretty, pretty cool. Okay, then I'll definitely be there to, on those two shows. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Alma. Okay, you have a good day. Talk to you later. Alma, Alma, yes. Alma. Yes, Alma. Yes. He's got a question Alma for you. Ask you. 
what, uh, this is Bob from Mr. Media. What is it that attracts you to Jeff and his music and it has kept you following him for so long? Well, you know what? He's, he's a very down-to-earth person. He's not like your typical celebrity that, you know, that just, just won't even, even sometimes uh, talk to you or even look at you. But he's just a sweetheart. He's a, a very nice guy, very talented singer. And he just likes to, you know, get along with everybody. And uh, so you you got to see him on Saturday. Where was where yes, was the show? At the Aqua Lounge in Beverly Hills. The Aqua Lounge. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting venue. It was uh, <laughs> it was definitely interesting. The crowd was interesting, and uh, and, and the whole atmosphere was kind of fun and. So, you know, you never know what you're going to get with the different venues. I mean, I've done all kinds of venues from playing on the floor in a gymnasium all the way to, you know, uh, you know, Dodger Stadium. So it, you never know. It, and it's always different and always experience. And none of the shows are ever the same. And you're always going to have glitches in the sound and there's going to be drama. But it's always, you know, fun and it never gets boring. But this, this last one that we had on Saturday it was fun. I mean, everybody was just going nuts and having a good time and, it seemed like everybody was really pleased with the show and, and enjoyed themselves and had a good experience. So I was I'm, I'm, I was very happy with it. Yeah, it was it was it was an awesome show. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more shows. Well, I appreciate it. I'll be looking forward to okay. seeing you there. So thank you. Uh, all righty, Jeff. Take care. Bye. Take care, Jeff. Calling in, Alma. Bye. 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 Um, Jeff, how does the new music uh, or does the new music differ from what you produced with 98 Degrees? It's a lot different. Um, there are elements of 98 degree sounds in some of the songs, like that one you just heard, as far as the harmonies and stuff. But, the, but you know, that's because I was in the group, you know. So, so I, there's naturally going to be part of that, that, my sound a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I just think that this one is more, uh, more of a fun album that I didn't think about when I was recording it. I just, we just, I had my guys that I do all my songs with my buddies from Ohio that were in the original group I started before 98 degrees. And, you know, they came out here in, in California, and we just sat in the studio and had beers and made songs. And whatever we were feeling, we were feeling, as opposed to, all right, we, well, everybody's going to expect a ballad, and then we need a mid-tempo. Of course, you need an up-tempo, and this is the style that 98 Degrees did, so we have to do this. And lyrically, we got to think about this. It was really just on the fly, from the soul, from the heart, and, and with the intent of fun and, and getting people to feel stuff. So uh, it, it's a lot different, totally different, more personal and, and uh, a lot more, you know, uh, I'd say less polished as far as like, uh, you know, marketing wise, marketability, but I think uh, more polished production wise. And I have to ask, what is your relationship with the other guys from 98 Degrees these days? Are you still in contact? Do you guys talk? Yeah, we all talked and we ended on, uh, well, we didn't really even officially end the group, but we, we ended our run together on good terms and we don't talk very often. It's probably not as much as we should given the experiences that we shared together, but, uh, you know, we do, we do talk and, uh, you know, I think I saw them in August, so it's been a couple of months since I've seen them, but I talked to Justin just the other day and, you know, I talked to the guys occasionally. If, uh, if Nick and Jessica had not hooked up, do you think the band would still be going or did that have nothing to do with it? It, it had absolutely nothing to do with it. You know, um, they were already together kind of at the end of our tour. And, I, you know, I think that show came out. We we had already decided, you know, I I was having my second child and I was married and you know, I wanted to be at home with them. And, you know, uh, we had been on the road so long. And we were on the road for five years straight and, and with very little time off. You know, I think in two years we had like seven days off, one 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 stretch, you know, total. So, uh, you know, we were, we were burnt out. There was a lot of traveling and wanted some stability. We needed to get grounded again, uh, you know. And so as much as uh, a wonderful lifestyle it is to be, you know, this pop pop guy that has music on the radio, sometimes it gets a little, if you're a down-to-earth guy, you know, I'm from Ohio, all about family. If you're a guy like that and you have that kind of a value system, you kind of want to get to that at some point. And that's what, what kind of took us, uh, took us in different directions. Well, speaking of down to earth, and I'm just sort of kidding there. Uh, was there anything that you learned about Nick from watching that TV show that you did not learn from touring with him for years? Well, I knew everything. You know, we were together so long. There was, I don't think there's anything personally, professionally, we didn't know about each other. We were like brothers, you know. So, you know, you love your brothers. Your brothers get on your nerves. You know, there are habits that we all have, personality traits we have, dislikes, dislikes. But you know, we were all close. But yeah, I know everything about Nick 
as far as you know there was to know at that at that point before we went in different directions. But I didn't watch the show. I tried watching it and I thought it was weird because <laughs> I was just on the road with that guy and I was like, now right. he's on TV. It was just kind of baffling to me and I didn't like how they were editing the show. So, but I know it was you know that's what TV is and they plant things a certain way. And, you know, so I was like, it's not real, you know, so I didn't really want to watch it. But I, su- I supported the show, and, you know, I'm happy. I was very happy for Nick, and I'm happy for where he's going with his career now, too. That was quite a time in reality TV between uh, the newlyweds with Nick and Jessica and the Osbournes. What what TV that was. <laughs> yeah, right? And and it was, yeah, and it's still going on. The reality shows are still going on. There's just so many of them now that I think that, that it's a bit watered down. But, yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a crazy time. Uh, well, let's come back to the music before we uh, we uh, wrap up here. Uh, the second song we're going to play is uh, Turn You Out, which features Rich Cronin. Now, am I out of touch? Because I always heard Turn You Out and, and understood it to mean a guy was sending a woman out to be a hooker. Is there a different meaning? That, that... <laughs> no. Yeah, it's definitely a different meaning. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make that meaning. I think it's just like... You know, it's just about dancing and having a good time and partying together with some girl and just wearing each other out. You know what I mean? Like, just just having so much fun together that you know you're worn out. You know, I don't think it's about anything having to do with being a hooker. I wouldn't. I got two kids. I wouldn't. You know, look, my my lyrics get racy. I mean, they get racy and edgy because most music are music either about sex or encourages sex, the sexuality or you know some sexiness to it. But I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mean and degrade women like that. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Oh, oh. That's interesting well, I, to know because I didn't I didn't know that when we were writing the song. Yeah, uh, that's why I had to ask because uh, I, I guess it's you're a nice Midwestern boy and I'm uh, I'm a uh, come from a New York background. I guess it, we hear that term and it means something different. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Geez, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm not I'm not pimping in my spare time. No, I'm actually teaching spelling to my kids. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, you heard it. You heard it here first. There's a headline from the show. Jeff Timmons not pimping in not the pimp. <laughs> um, All right, well, let's play Turn You Out, and then we'll come back for just a minute, and we'll we'll close out the show. This is Turn You Out, Jeff Timmons, featuring Rich Cr- Robert, she's sure hot. 
like that, if you know what I mean. Look it up, Jeff, and thanks for the vaccine. Jeff Timmons featuring Rich Cronin on Turn You Out. I uh, suspect a few people are hearing that song right now, thinking about it in a different way now that I've uh, opened my mouth. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I think I just, uh, I, I just gave you all new street cred, Jeff. I mean, you know. Uh, you know, I was, you know, both of was trying to put the hood in this back in the day, so now I finally have it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need with kids, I know. Um, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, and now I understand if people go to your website, Jeff Timmons, that's two M's, jefftimmons.com, uh, they can register and then what happens? Well, they can register, but, you know, I um, I just made it available. They could, before we had people register and put their email in, I would send them an email. Well, I have over a million emails that I've been sending, and it's <laughs> taken me forever to get them out. And the email just directs people to the Reverb Nation page. Uh, so people can just go to ReverbNation.com slash Jeff Timmons 2, the number 2. And th- as I'm creating the album and picking the songs and mixing them down, I'm putting them all up there. So, so far I think i got like nine, eight or nine songs up out of 13. I'm going to put 12 or 13 I'm going to put up. So they can just go there, download the album for free, get it, spread it around, pass it around. I don't care if you share it, you know, whatever. I just want as many people to get the music as they can and form their opinion about it. And, of course, folks, if you want to spend money on Jeff Timmons and put a little dough in his pocket, you can go to iTunes or Amazon.com, any of those places, and download 98 Degrees Tunes. Jeff, you, I mean, you, you're not against making a couple dollars either, right? No, no, no. Look, I mean, I, I have to make a living. <laughs> I have kids. So, you know, I have so many songs that I just want to create the fan base and get people excited, and then I'll put songs up for sale on my website. You know, I've got a lot more and that I'll be releasing, and but I wanted to give them the best of what I've got so far, and... And uh, and so you know, hopefully people will come back there, and then they'll they won't mind buying some of the other stuff later on. All right, well, folks, JeffTimmons.com. You can learn about Jeff, what he's doing there, or or uh, ReverbNation.com/slash/JeffTimmons and the number two, and you can download his latest music for free there. So go do that. Support Jeff. Jeff, you've been a great sport. Uh, putting up with some of my nonsense here on the show, and we enjoyed having you. And I know there are a lot of people listening and and uh, having a good time. So thank you very much for being on the show today. My pleasure, Bob. Please, anytime. I, I the feelings mutual, and I thank you for having me on. My pleasure. You take care, and good luck with the new album. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You too. Bye. And folks, for more great music-related interviews, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my lost tapes interviews with John Denver, Gene Simmons of KISS, as well as a more recent interview with precious film composer Mario Gregorov, and many more. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes, and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. Try it. It works. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash Andelman or facebook.com slash Andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day and come spend it with us.